Right, so Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves have gone full Tory, despite Reeves' desperate claims to hate being called a red Tory, even though it fits her like a glove, that term, and nothing quite nails that statement down, quite like telling the world that Margaret Thatcher was right, and that she is now Labour's answer to Thatcher. As much as I was brought up to not speak ill of the dead, it's very difficult to not do so when it comes to Margaret Thatcher. The lives and livelihoods she destroyed in her ideological crusade to sell off every public asset not nailed down. The rampant unemployment, and perhaps how avoidable that might have been if not for the Falklands War, saving her sorry backside. She might be dead and buried, people might well still cheer and celebrate that. But with Labour now taking the political position her Conservative Party occupied, because the Tory party of today under Rishi Sunak have gone so far to the right that she's just ended up being reincarnated as a nasally capitalist ex-banker with a bob cut instead of a bouffant. And if you're voting Labour now, it's a vote for Thatcher's politics. Right, so Labour have been flirting with reflections of Thatcherism for long enough that it really ought to start ringing alarm bells in some heads. Starmer has said quite recently that Thatcher affected meaningful change and set loose Britain's natural entrepreneurism, which is just the most pious drivel to most of us who grew up through those times. Meaningful change came in the form of mass employment. My dad, amongst those three million people at that time, during the 1980s, who lost their job during Thatcher's decimating reign. Thatcher also oversaw two massive recessions, which she used as the excuse for the mass sell-off of all manner of public assets from BAE to BT, Brit Oil, British Gas, British Airways, BP, British Steel, British Rail, British this, that and the flaming other. You know the crack by now, I'm sure, and probably spotted a thing or two I missed out of that list. But Labour's leadership are now celebrating their similarities with her, with Thatcher. The Starmer has got a new slogan on the go now, promising a decade of national renewal. But if Reeves the banker and Starmer the economically illiterate think this is the answer, then they're both deluded fools. That a British public, after 14 years of economic failure and pain delivered as always by the Tories, austerity will stand for any more of that, any more failure. Especially when so many, despite the warnings, are putting so much stock in getting the Tories out in order to effect some meaningful change. Well, they're going to be in for a horrible shock when they realise nothing at all actually changes with Starmer and Reeves in charge of the country. Now, much of this ire has come out from last night when Rachel Reeves delivered the annual Mays Lecture, an address to Reeves' old workmates in effect, the bankers in the City of London. So it was always going to be a right-wing philosophical love-in of some sort, the kind of politics that they appreciate. The very fact Reeves was invited to deliver it should be a massive klaxon warning in all honesty. Now much of this speech was leaked in advance, as these things tend to be in this day and age, and the Funding for the Future blog of economist Richard Murphy, formerly called Tax Research UK, had this to say about Reeves' lecture, the contents of it, as I said, having already been leaked in advance. The entire substance of her speech seems to be encapsulated in this paragraph, which is apparently at the core of the Labour promise to the country. When we speak of a decade of national renewal, that is what we mean. As we did at the end of the 1970s, we stand at an inflection point. And as in earlier decades, the solution lies in wide-ranging supply-side reform to drive investment, remove the blockages constraining our productive capacity, and fashion a new economic settlement, drawing on evolutions in economic thought. It takes no reading between the lines to realise that she believes that if only the restrictions on unfettered market capitalism were removed, we would have growth. This removal of regulatory restrictions on business is, after all, exactly what the euphemism supply-side reforms means. There is no other possible interpretation. This has always been the 55 Tufton Street agenda. Even the Conservative Party, in more extreme moments, has failed to embrace much of this idea. But now it would seem that Rachel Reeves has. In particular, I can hear her talking about planning reforms in a way that echoes comments made by Mark Littlewood of the Institute of Economic Affairs while sitting beside me in the BBC studios over many years. I have to admit that I never expected Labour to adopt such an absurd or even depraved policy. What Reeves is, in effect, saying is that businesses should have the right to trample over the interests of anyone else in society in the pursuit of profit, whatever the externalities or costs they might impose on others as a consequence, both now and in the future. 
If you want a precise description of everything that is wrong with modern capitalism and why it has caused the destruction that is resulting in so many of our current crises, including on climate change, then it is the fact that politicians persistently ignore those externalities or costs that Rachel Reeves is now saying that she will also turn a blind eye towards. Please forgive me if I cannot be bothered to spend much time on the remainder of what she will say when you have embraced an idea as hideous as this one any footnote that you wish to add to try to ameliorate the impact of your proposal has to necessarily be ignored because you have already decided as a matter of policy to treat nothing but the pursuit of profit as being of any concern. How did the Labour Party reach such a low point? I love his eloquence. I would have sworn so much more trying to explain that, but equally, I'm not an economist than he is, and I am more than happy to defer to his interpretation, which is as scathing as you can get without the aforementioned swearing. But anyway, he's basically calling Reeves an idiot who is lining up the freeing up of big business to do whatever the hell it likes, because that appears to be where Labour's magical growth is going to come from in her head. I presume she's looked at all the privatisation under Thatcher and thought, oh, look, so that's where she got the growth from. Clearly, we need big business to be involved more with how the country is run and be free to do what is necessary to achieve growth, not seeing that those sell-offs, all that privatisation, were one-offs. And once they were gone, they were gone. At what cost will Reeves's unfettered, unleashed capitalism on steroids move here? What Murphy describes as her supply-side reforms to all of us, in the same manner as we paid a heavy price for Thatcher's nonsense in the 80s, where, sure, she had those assets to sell off to get the country out of recession and create that illusion of growth. But they've all gone now. And all that cash never went into the country or the services as was promised. It lined the pockets of the wealthy, created greater inequality, because nothing ever did trickle down. Reeves is sold on the idea of doing this again. But if so, history has already shown it might make for some good numbers for the government. But they're, in that reality, utterly meaningless when most of the country sees no benefit from them. There have been plenty of comments on all of this, as you can imagine, and Labour's defence of Reeves's speech on social media. Mick Wright wrote, Darren Jones defending Reeves's Thatcher speech is on the radio saying Margaret Thatcher delivered a decade of national renewal. Labour's acceptance of the Tory framing on everything has been unhinged since the Blair era, but it's only getting worse. It's not just Labour MP Darren Jones trying to defend Reeves or Labour's position here, though. Labour Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy, a man who is used to contorting himself into all manner of positions politically, has today declared that Thatcher was a visionary. A visionary, he says. Tottenham? Have you not had enough of this guy after 20 sodding years yet? Truvus wrote, Thatcher didn't bring about a decade of renewal, as Rachel Rees claims. She let British industry collapse rather than modernise it and built the economy around financial services through disastrous deregulation, making thousands of parasites filthy rich and millions much poorer. Former Scottish Labour leader Richard Leonard wrote, In the 1980s, manufacturing was butchered, factory after factory closed, Privatisation was let rip, unemployment rocketed, profits boomed, the wage share fell, the rich got richer, and inequality soared. No rewriting of history. Thatcher didn't renew the economy, she broke it. And suspended Jewish Labour councillor Martin Abrams wrote, Why the hell is a Labour MP heaping praise on Thatcher? That woman systematically destroyed working class communities across the UK, tearing up the very fabric of our society that we are still suffering the consequences from today, Labour MPs should pour nothing but scorn on her. They're obviously right, and there are many more examples I could have chosen from besides. Reeves is my generation. We both grew up through the Thatcher years, but whereas my dad was a factory foreman, her parents were teachers. They weathered what went on. And my family, like millions of others around the country, suffered through it. She's utterly clueless, and Starmer even more so. Totally out of his depth on economic issues, utterly reliant on Reeves to hold his hand on such matters. It's no longer so much a vote Labour to get the Tories out moment, it's more a vote Labour to bring back Thatcher. You've got to be mad to vote Labour after this. And if this isn't enough of an issue for you, I never even got on to last week's plan that came out of Reeves's mouth, plan for growth, which was yet more Thatcherism. As I looked into Reeves's plans for a national wealth fund, which sounds good on the front of it sounds like they're pinching an old Corbyn policy but she really isn't the wealth isn't heading to us but it might trickle down still 
That's the plan. Don't be silly. We know it won't. It's been done before and it's been proven to be a lie. But Reeves is sold on repeating the mistake. Find out all about the details of that con as well in this video recommendation here. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.